Well, welcome to the Other Hands. I'm Lyle. I'm Jeremy. I'm Chris. And today we're going to be reviewing the free league game uh, Mechatron. Mm-hmm. It kind of says Mutant Year Zero. Uh, very more prominently the Mechatron, <laughs> uh, but that's because it's using the Year Zero or the Mutant Year Zero system. Yeah, Year Zero engine. I've heard. Yeah. Oh, engine. Okay. Yes. Mm. And it won the silver at the 2015 and 15 Enies. Mm. Ennies? Ennies. Ennies. Hmm. Ennies. Ennies. Yeah, I guess so. Ennies. Ennies. <laughs> I, I don't know. Just the, yeah. 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 So that's what we're going to talk about. We've actually, this is going to be a, a review based on, I guess, looking at the book, but also we played two sessions. Mm-hmm. We played one of the, uh, similar to Mutant Year Zero, mm-hmm. or if you're aware of that game, there's the rules in the beginning of the book, and then in the back, there's like a little introductory campaign. Kind of gets you settled into the world of... Uh, Mechatron 7 or in Mutant Year Zero. Now, Mutant Year Zero is a, a post apocalypse game or a post apocalyptic game, which is what I was trying to say before, in which you play uh, mutants. So, kind of genetically, hmm, I don't, don't want to say deformed, enhanced, or something. Uh, that was followed by, what, what was that? Gen, Gen Lab. Gen Lab, mm-hmm. which is where you play mutant animals. Right. Mm-hmm. And then third in the series was Mechatron, where you play robots. Uh, and they're all set in the same world. And it's been followed up with Elysium, which is right. humans, right? Right. And yeah. it's kind of returning to uh, a city, like a, a, a settlement of, mm-hmm. of humans that are not mutants, <laughs> mm. basically. I think oh, it's, yeah. How strange. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so like I didn't read the the setting, but the kind of the floating city or kind of the, some isolated city mm-hmm. that that didn't suffer from the apocalypse was rebuilt. Hmm. Oh, okay, mm-hmm. yeah. But uh, then there's a problem. Mm. Yeah, they all follow the same pattern. Uh, very important to the game uh, is uh, where they are, the place that they are. Mm-hmm. So here are your robots, and the robots are in a factory city called Mechatron Seven, and the premise is uh, decades earlier all the humans were evacuated. And uh, an AI named, uh, I'm going to pronounce it Nodos, N-O-D-O-S, Nodos, Mm -hmm. was put in charge and has been controlling uh, this factory city that's becoming increasingly run down. I mean, they're not getting any new parts. Um, And they're just producing stuff to produce stuff because there's nobody that's using it for any wars that are happening or for any uh, commercial reasons. So they're just going about their routine. And the premise of the game is that some robots are starting to become self-aware. So they're starting to ask questions like, why? Why are we doing this? Why are we here? So that's Mechatron. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is, well, first give a rundown uh, of the game how it plays, and then we'll give our review and our thoughts of it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it's uh, a year zero system engine. Yeah, year zero engine right. game. <laughs> and that uses D6s. Yes. And it's similar to World of Darkness if for people who have played that, where you take uh, your attributes and then you stack it onto some sort of skill, and then that gives you a dice pool. And of course, you also add your. Um, an item that you have, mm-hmm. and that will perform your, your dice pool. So similar to uh, another year zero system that we've reviewed, Forbidden Lands. Right. Yeah. Yeah, almost the same system as far as the mechanics go. Yeah, very similar. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, so what, what are some of the attributes that they use? And, and we should say, like, this game does a really good job of providing a very, like, robot skin. So mm-hmm. they've changed the name of everything so that... To really emphasize that you're playing a robot character. Yeah, the uh, I, I really like that about it. They um, they even go as far as saying the different attributes and uh, skills. They don't refer to them as that. They the skills are called programs, mm-hmm. and your special abilities that you get are secondary functions, and your add-on things are modules and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Everything is really well flavored mm-hmm. for it. Um, just like in Forbidden Lands, there's four primary uh, attributes stats, I suppose. Uh, there's servos, stability, processor, and network, and those roughly map to strength, dexterity, intelligence, and no social skill empathy I guess. was what yeah. forbidden lands used right? oh right yeah. yeah yeah so that's your network <clears throat> so networking yeah. oh yeah, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah uh so you pair those with uh one of your programs things like um assault force infiltrate those those are pretty uh uh 
basic names. And then uh, the number of successes you roll is how well you do. Uh, this one, like Forbidden Lands, if you roll ones, those can damage you, assuming that you try to uh, you push your roll, which allows you to re-roll the dice and mm-hmm. uh, move forward. But that can hurt you, like it did me. We'll talk about that part later. <laughs> yeah, and success uh, would be a six on a d6. Yes, they, they use special mm-hmm. dice. Uh, we didn't use special dice here. I kickstarted it, but I didn't get the dice. Yeah, I did they, get. They have special dice, but you can use regular d6. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, with the Kickstarter that I got, uh, I got the main book and the cards, the map, uh, a couple other things that aren't shown. Mm-hmm. The cards are really important in that you build your, you can build your attributes by just choosing, like what your head is, what your body is, and what your your legs are. Or your, mm-hmm. Your, your treads in some cases. We we did that. Um, you, you, it's three cards in total, head, torso, and legs, and those will give you your different stats. You say can, though. Is it is there a different build system for it? Or is that the... Uh, the oh, sorry. You, you can use the cards, or you could use it straight out of the book. Okay, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. That, was, that was an interesting mechanic. I like that that character creation is you pick your different parts as opposed to uh, just assigning numbers to the skill. It feels very involved in game, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it was, it's quite fun. Yeah, and as you can see, they do art on the front of the cards, so you get a little mm-hmm. bit of an idea of the peer appearance of your robot. So, mm-hmm. the frail legs, or the you know large torso, or the you know big or small head. So that gives you a lot of feel for you know the character that you've built. And if you do it from the book, of course, you can kind of you're coming up with that yourself. But I think the cards are mm-hmm. very nice because they they give you a little bit of uh, uh, you know. The visualization and mm-hmm. also yeah. they do a nice uh, job with theming so there are manufacturers for each of the different parts so they give you names and model numbers for the the torsos and the heads and things that you choose yeah yeah so it's uh, up there and then yeah you know, on one side you got your attributes and then the other you get m- whether or not they give you modules or add to your armor mm-hmm. yeah right so that made for a fun session zero and we, we oh, were yeah. talking about that in tales from the loop how the the session zero can be quite quite fun because right. you're sitting there sitting around talking about how you want your, your kid characters to play and interact mm-hmm. uh, with each other and this was pretty easy because yeah you i just took the cards we laid them out and you guys sat there and put together your little robots mm-hmm. and then yeah you had a nice visual in front of you right of what your robot could look like of course you're not married to that mm-hmm. appearance mm-hmm. but it, it, it's a nice start yeah yeah mm-hmm. you know. And you, you have different robot types. Yes. So, Jeremy, you were... Uh, I was the protocol droid, uh-huh. yes. And, yeah. yeah, and so that kind of specializes. So the, the strongest ability or the key attribute is uh, network. So I have a lot of communication and also a higher uh, bu- bu- bum, a higher hierarchy rating because um, of my function. Yes, so, yeah. yeah. So hierarchy is very important in the robot world. Right. Know your place. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Yeah. yeah, so I can give orders to anything with a lower hierarchy than myself, and I have to take orders from anything higher. Right. Yeah. yeah. And then with the programs, there are tw- 12... Programs are, uh, I guess you could say, actions that you can take? That's, I, yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, so there's, mm-hmm. there's 12 basic programs which can be shared by all robots, and then each type of robot so jeremy was a protocol robot Uh, so he also has a unique Mm. program that he that he gets uh, for being a protocol robot Mm. and you were uh, i was a scrap robot Mm -hmm. so uh conversely to uh jeremy i uh my robot had lots of different modules uh and extra bits added on but i had zero for hierarchy so Mm. assuming i wasn't self-aware i'd have to take orders from everyone right yeah Mm -hmm. so kind of the scrap robots are outside of the kind of civilization of the system of the robots yes yeah. yes right. yeah, built from scrap mm-hmm. yes and then the other examples are there's like a security robot there's a the compa- companion robot if, if that was it actually this is what ah, kind yes. of the sample there the yeah. ones that are uh, used to interacting and servicing humans yeah. they look like humans yeah Ish. right, right. Ish. yeah uh there's also security robots uh the clean- battle robot yep cleaning robots mm-hmm. um what else is there Oh, uh, w- there was one coordination robot. Coordination one is a very high hierarchy. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you pick what robot you want to be, and that's going to give you your special program. Mm-hmm. Then, yeah, you put you put your robot together. Uh, so they kind of had an idea, like you wanted to be. You were going to be like more of a brainier robot. You're going to be more of a brawnier robot. Yes. Mm-hmm. And they kind of put it together. Cards here. It's a whole whole deck of cards, but you also get like modules, uh, artifacts, or things that you can find. 
So then they, they pulled out some modules mm -hmm. uh, and, and then they had all the cards. And so, I mean, they have a character sheet, but then they also had stuff on cards, right. which provided the rules. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. it's nice how modular the system was, um, you know, not, not doing a pun from the word modules. But um, so the type of robot security and uh, protocol bot, they, uh, that was roughly equivalent to your class. But in a lot of games, your class will give you your, a list of special abilities, like a D&D &D rogue will get backstab and pick locks and stuff like that. But um, in this one here, you only got one or two special skills from your uh, robot class. And uh, then the modules is kind of what gives you your special powers. Mm. And those modules are things like I don't know, laser guns that are built into you or grenade launchers or chainsaws or... It's obviously sick. See what, how you... Yeah, I'm, I'm, trying to think, I'm trying to think of a non-weapon uh, example. EMP, <laughs> EMP protector. Uh, you, had, oh, you also had the pulse thing. Yeah, yeah, right. But you had some non-combat stuff. Yeah, I, have, I had a, uh, a backup system. So no, when yeah. I'm, I'm damaged or an attribute is at zero, I can spend energy to raise it to its maximum value, but mm. I have to spend energy every turn to maintain that. Okay. So, yeah. yeah, when I'm on the verge of death, I can kind of maintain myself if I have existing energy points. Mm -hmm. And then there's secondary functions, secondary programs? Yes, yes. Yep. And you get a choice of three, or, or three specific to what robot you picked. Mm -hmm. And then there's also general ones that you can pick. And then mm -hmm. that's stuff that you spend your experience to acquire more of these. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As a slight criticism, I didn't, none of those really got me excited. Mm. Almost everything else in the game, the modules, the, the bot type, the body parts, there was all like, oh, I want to try all these different things. But the secondary functions, nothing really sparked me. They were definitely situational. Yeah. Because especially the ones like, for example, mm. the protocol droid, there mm. was an uh, interpreter, which, which is really good if you're going to communicate with anybody out <laughs> except for other robots. Right, right, right. <laughs> and, and the game starts as interacting with pretty much with just other robots. Right. Also the coordination one, which is great if you have somebody playing a coordination robot, which mm -hmm. we didn't. Right. Mm -hmm. And the, the third one, I can't remember. Yeah. They did seem to be, the secondary functions were going to be what you would mostly be utilizing once you were out of the robot setting, well, you know, you once you're interacting. You say yeah. that, but the cleaning robots one was uh, specific only to the setting. It was, um, uh, what's it called? Corruption or rot or something like that, which is specific to the Mechatron thing. Oh, but I think I think rot exists outside. Oh, does it as well? Yeah, oh, okay. I think, I think I it's an ongoing rotten world. <laughs> okay, I take that back then. <laughs> no, but I think in the in the setting itself, though, because uh, they do emphasize that because you can see it's very apparent in this robot world yeah. where the things are falling apart and the robots that are supposed to be cleaning that up mm. <laughs> need to yeah be noticing that the most. But yeah, and I believe that exists. Yeah, in the outside setting as okay. well. Okay. Yeah, I think everything is falling apart and decrepit. So. Yeah. So when they get outside, it's like, I got to clean everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Yeah. All so right. that, that was the, the characters mm -hmm. of, yeah. And we talked in conflict and combat. Uh, yeah. What, what you do is you roll, you get your successes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also pose rolls. So, so for example, if you were to roll to hit somebody, and then if you get one success, then that, that yeah, that's a success. And then the person can roll their defense uh, and see if they can cancel out that success. Right. So that's how that would work. If you get more than one, even after the person opposes it, and this is, uh, this is in uh, close combat, you, you have more than one success, then you had some stunts, which were nice. Right. And they could be just straight up additional damage mm -hmm. you could take. So if you had two successes, then one success is you've succeeded and mm -hmm. then the second one is an additional point of damage or uh, on top of any other damage you would do but there are things like you could add your n plus two to initiative next round right which was nice mm -hmm. uh, or you can knock the uh, the other person down or the the npc down uh, so it was nice to have those choices other than just straight up damage did yeah. they have stunts as a part of any of the other uh, mutant uh books uh I don't remember them in Forbidden Lands. Was it in Tales from the Loop or Elysium or anything like that? Oh, as far as... I think it's always been in Mutant Year Zero. I think combat has been like that. But uh, combat, especially for Tales from the Loop, combat is not so damage-based. Okay. You're, you're just trying to, you know... For, for Mutant Year Zero, I'm going to guess yes, but mm -hmm. I, I've only read it. and it, I, I read it prior to this. Okay. Mm. So I didn't go back and check to see how similar it was to Mutant Year Zero. Okay. I don't recall it from Forbidden Lands, but that's a different universe, so maybe uh, maybe not. Yeah, there's certainly tweaks, but there's a lot of similarities. And um, one, one big difference between uh, Mechatron and other games like Mutant Year Zero or Forbidden Lands, mm -hmm. because we, you take different types of trauma. Yes. And yes. it can be straight up uh, physical damage 
or you can be at fatigued or other things or, mm-hmm. or affected with your spirit. Mm, yeah. Right. And here you're a robot, so you don't get fatigued mm-hmm. or your spirit doesn't, you don't lose morale or whatever. So everything is straight up damage. Mm. And how you take damage is like it'll affect a specific, you either roll on a table to see where the damage um, affects you. So if it does your, your, your stability part, then once that goes down to zero, then you're kind of out. Mm-hmm. Whereas in a game like Forbidden Lands, uh, you're, you're still out, but you're out in a different way. You're, you're either like so fatigued that you can't move on. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. uh, that was actually a, something that I really liked between the two games. It, it felt quite different between robots and like living beings mm-hmm. in that when the robots are knocked down to zero, that that's basically it. They shut down and they, they can't do anything, but they're not dead. It mm-hmm. actually takes a lot of effort to kill a robot. Mm-hmm. But conversely for like the flesh and blood characters, when they're knocked down to zero, they can still crawl. They're still able to communicate. They can do something. They don't shut down, but they're also on death's door at that point. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's much easier to kill them, but mm-hmm. they're less helpless when they reach that state. Mm. So it felt different from robots. Yeah. And you can also take damage from pushing. So when you roll, as Chris mentioned before, you roll, uh, maybe you got some successes and you want more or you didn't get any successes. Uh, You look at what you rolled and if you rolled any ones, you would set those aside. And if you're going to push, then you you know you're going to take damage from those ones. Mm. So sometimes you could roll and you have no ones and no successes. But if you roll any new ones, they're also going to count as damage. Right. And they're going to affect, as opposed to rolling randomly on a table, when like somebody else does damage to you, when you do damage to yourself, it's the attribute that you're using. Right. So if I'm using my, again, my stability to maybe take a shot at somebody, then I'm going to take damage to my stability. And let's mm. say I take a point of damage to stability and my rating was four, it's now three. Mm-hmm. So not only have I taken damage, but I've also reduced the effectiveness of that attribute. So, oh, yeah, and that's the same as Forbidden Lands and mm-hmm. that. And we really like that, the like pushing, I guess, pushing your luck, yeah, pushing right. your role. It was it made for a lot of nice choices. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, it did makes every time you roll, you, you sweat over it a little bit to see, uh, should, should I push it? Can I do it just a little bit better? It really backfired on me on this session, though. <laughs> <laughs> Now, one thing about Forbidden Lands, you, you want to push because if you take damage, you get something that you yes, need to the, fuel yes, stuff. Yes, willpower points. Willpower, yeah, willpower, willpower for magic. Yeah, right. And everything in Mechatron is, is fueled pretty much by energy points. Right. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, so that economy is interesting because in Mechatron, when you're in that original beginning setting, mm-hmm. you receive the full energy. There's places to obviously recharge robots in mm-hmm. the robot world. So you're constantly full of energy points. But once you leave that system, you're going to actually have to be very conservative with using your energy points because there's only certain ways you know, that you can recharge. I think you have like a solar ability to, s- to slowly recharge, but there's no place outside of Megatron 7 to plug in so that you're receiving full energy. Well, also, yeah, you need a, an energy point every... Every day. Every day, Every day just, right, right. just to have you all your your uh, systems functioning. Right. Yeah, yeah so I, I think that's going to change very much how you're playing your robot character within, you know, Megatron 7. And then yeah. once you're in the wilds, it's going yeah. to be, yeah, very much more survival-based. Right. Yeah. And, and I think appreciate. that's maybe intentional on the designer's part because it, the robots feel quite powerful. I mean, you mm. can, some of these modules here, literally you can have an auto-hitting grenade launcher in your chest that uh yeah it does like, and we did have that in the game where like jeremy oh yeah has a, a pulse rifle and the way it was written is like it's like a pulse wave <coughs> yeah, module. yeah, yeah pulse. And just like as long as he was spending the energy mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. he was gonna eat and when you think about it you did spend a lot of energy i did yeah, yeah five energy the maximum is 10 so you spent half of your energy right. to power it and you, you did damage to five different robots but he yeah you kind of instinctively going yeah but that's auto hit really you know? mm, right you have that reaction we're kind of we did pause the game a little bit because we we're mm-hmm. i mean this first time playing but then when you think about it it's and this comes came up again and again in this game is now you got to switch it's it's a robot it's a, just a different way mm. of thinking and i guess they did a good job of really trying to help you make that switch and we'll talk about that a little bit later but mm-hmm more so than any other game we played, Mm -hmm. uh, you really need to switch how you think Mm. uh, 
or how you play your character and and the the mindset yeah yeah, it was, mm-hmm. it was, yeah. Yeah, we really struggled that in the first session, especially, and I kind mm-hmm. of ignored it in the second. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like it had moved to a more uh, adventure part, yeah, right, more action less, point. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> we should say, yeah, yeah. The first session was set up, and the second session was all right. Now you're <laughs> knocked down. <laughs> so mm. yeah, so then yeah, so conflict is. Uh, that and it's resolved and of course conflict isn't just uh fighting it's also manipulating people or mm. other robots or mm-hmm. manipulating people or, or sh- showing s- networking with them and we had a situation like that in the first session right mm-hmm. yeah and doing that uh and yeah that, i think that's i think that covers it pretty well yeah mm-hmm. yeah there's the artifacts as well we didn't run into any of those um do you have any commentary on that yeah mm-hmm. Not, no, my commentary on the artifacts is that there's things that you find that are not readily accessible. They're special, I, I, as you could guess from the artifact thing, and maybe from the old world, I guess. Right. I found that, uh, and again, we, we only played a little bit of the campaign in the back, but I found we, from reading Mutant Year Zero, the, 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 first, the first game in the series, that finding artifacts was a very important part uh, a more important part of that campaign. Mm-hmm. There was a lot. It was whereas this has a more almost like a police procedural style. Mm-hmm. So there's like stuff you needed to do as opposed to look for artifacts. Whereas Mutant Year Zero was more open ended, fine stuff. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, similar to again, you can see the map in the background, and you, you flip that over. Like that's Spectron Seven as as the <laughs> uh, the city, the factory city that they're in. And on the flip side is the geographical region that they're in. So if it's I guess similar to Forbidden Lands or a right. uh, Mutant Year Zero is like you f- you kind of explore a hex and find a, an artifact, and I, I yeah I found that very prominent in Mutant Year Zero and less so here. Mm-hmm. But we didn't do the full campaign. Right, right. Mm-hmm. Only one episode of that police drama. <laughs> yeah. Right, right. So we'll we'll talk about the campaign without d- doing any spoilers. Mm-hmm. But yeah, same as Mutant Year Zero. And I'm going to guess Gen Lab is a big part of the game, or a big part of the book is the adventure in the back, mm. and it's the campaign that kind of sets. And in in both cases, the the campaign is designed to get you to both explore where you are, but then also break free from where you are. <laughs> in Mutant Year Zero, it's to find the truth mm. about how you came to be. Mm. And then that's revealed in the campaign. This one's kind of similar, though. Find the truth about what's happening in Mechatron 7. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I suppose it is. And I, the, the premise of the game, as we said at the beginning, is you become self-aware. Mm-hmm. And that's how the campaign starts. Mm-hmm. And there's like little, little tiny scenarios at the beginning, depending on what type of robot you are. So if you're a scrap mm-hmm. robot and they say you're in this location and... They become a self-aware. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But well, actually, to back up a little bit, uh, in the robot society, there is still like pe- robots still have free time. They have oh, they do activities like watching gladiator sports, gambling, <laughs> gambling. There's drugs as right. well. Uh, like, and you can imagine like drugs are like different like software and mm-hmm. and that. Uh, I guess you can get viruses. Uh, yeah, they have, like they have viruses as well. And, yeah. So they ha- they have a lot of the trappings of the human world. Mm. So they, and they mimic it. And you, you even, they even have like bars where they would go and consume oil. Right. right. But a lot of that is like a, aping the human routine. Yeah. yeah. It, mm-hmm. That, that kind of starts getting into the, what we were talking about before about how you play these robots. And there's, there's no, just strict definition in the book of this is what these robots are like, and which is, of course, good. That allows you to more options when you're role-playing. But that there are some open questions. For example, like Lyle said, why are these robots watching a gladiatorial fight? Why are they drinking oil and gambling? Is it Do they innately get pleasure out of this? Do the robots actually have emotion? Or mm. is it just something that they've seen the humans do and they're mimicking it? Mm-hmm. If that's the case, why are they mimicking it? Is that right. part of their program? Or is their program drifting from their original intention? Mm. There's, a, there's a lot of open space to play with to see what you do. 
and uh, it, that that is part of the fun, but it's also pretty tough. <laughs> yeah, robots yeah, yeah. have. Uh, uh, yeah, and I guess g- getting right into the challenge is playing the self-aware and what what that means. Mm, mm. And I, as, as the the game master, I tried to signal as they well, you're starting to ask why questions. Mm. Um, because per, the robots have personalities, so if mm-hmm. you interact with a uh, an unself-aware robot, it still has a personality. And then you interact with a self-aware robot, it has a personality as well. And yeah, it can get. I suppose emotions like, like anger or, yeah, I guess it's deriving some sort of pleasure from certain things, like even if they're not self-aware, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it was, yeah, it was hard for us to find what the line was. Like, what what should we be doing differently Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. now that we're, I mean, you start off Mm self-aware, like that the trigger happens. Mm -hmm. But, okay, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. How, How do I play the robot now and... And I had, as the game master, I had to play both unself-aware robots and self-aware robots. Mm-hmm. And what am I really doing differently? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, how about we go through and say how we each approached mm-hmm. that <laughs> thing? Like, cause I've definitely played very differently from you. Oh, and, right, uh, right. And whatnot. So, yeah, by all means, how how did you approach being a self-aware robot? Yeah, it was it was a little difficult for me to kind of figure out like at what point we were in because it does it does really feel like Mechatron Seven is everything is on the verge of self-awareness and we may just be the players may just be kind of the leading edge I of the that. same yeah yeah because the, you know the things that had developed the entertainment and thing and distractions they all seemed like they were kind of makeshift built like these were things that you know they were imitating the the human behaviors and things and maybe robots were coming closer to those kind of human needs but they hadn't realized it yet but it it had an, an, a a tone that I wasn't quite sure like where to to fit in, and especially being a protocol droid or protocol protocol model, I needed to uh, be pretty strict about you know how I should be functioning and what I should be doing because everything was evolved and everything was centered around my hierarchy and my network abilities. Mm-hmm. But if I'm becoming self aware, that would be the the thing I would I would either be using that in a in a manipulative way or I would be kind of trying to disconnect myself from that. So it was hard to find figure out kind of where we were and especially when mm. we were we n- lost our initial tasking and were sent to do something else and i was trying to figure out how conscious or how disturbed i would be by that and how mm. like, committed i would be to this new task so yeah playing that that self awareness it, it was difficult because i wasn't sure how much i could be questioning with my character because i thought it was a very the setup is you know, humans have left and you're left with these tasks and you're making boxes and you're putting things in them that are for no one that go nowhere. So it, it's ve- it is a very strange existential question for these robots to be deciding what is my purpose? Do I want to figure out what's going on? Where are the, the humans? Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, I thought that, that was very challenging. I don't I don't think I quite fit or found the, the way to, to role play that yet. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I think the box... Hacking is a good example. I mean, they 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 play uh, prominent NPCs at the beginning of the campaign, and they be- these NPCs become self aware, and they start going, "Why are we making these boxes? What are we making these boxes for? Mm-hmm. Who's using them? No, mm-hmm. They're not. They're just piling up." And then that signals to Nodos and the the those serving Nodos that they've become self aware. Now Nodos, the AI. Uh, realizes that there is this problem, and they're trying to root it out. Mm-hmm. And you're, you're, as the players are becoming self-aware, but they're not supposed to let on that they're becoming self-aware because mm. if you become self-aware, it's a problem, and that's established right at the beginning of the campaign. Yep. And the campaign has kind of a police procedural style where they go, okay, now you're part of this team mm-hmm. that's going to find errors, error elimination team. Mm-hmm. And there's different work orders, well, adventures, scenarios mm-hmm. that you do. And you go off and kind of fix the problem. And they're all, surprise, surprise, related to self-aware robots. Yep. So it's to introduce or to reveal, I guess like Jeremy's alluding to, like how much of a problem this self-awareness thing is mm. becoming and, and how it manifests itself differently. Mm. Um, mm-hmm. 
So, but how did you approach it, Chris? Um, well, uh, just like uh, in Mutant Year Zero and in uh, Forbidden Lands, the uh, the character creation has uh, like different lists of personalities. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the one I went with was uh, confused and full of questions. Mm-hmm. So I just went played that to the hilt. Just kind of <laughs> I'm self aware and I have no idea what's going on. So I tried to play bubbly and happy and just very kind of lost in uh, what was going on. Mm. So uh, yeah, it was um, interesting because as as a uh, scrap robot my character had a hierarchy of zero which means anything basically any other robot said i should have to follow mm-hmm. um unquestioningly but uh taking initiative and going on like a police procedure acting as if i were a figure of authority was really off-putting to other robots around <laughs> and as, as gm lyle played that very well like they kept looking to each other or like when i would say something that to say make a decision for example everyone would turn and look at jeremy's character because you know he's the one who should be making decisions and not me uh so yeah yeah. it was good and and we had like all the npc was self-aware but like kind of was there i guess i was playing it to emphasize that hey we we got a hide that you're self-aware so mm-hmm. yeah it would go mm-hmm. no it, it's normal to refer to jeremy's guy right. mm-hmm. yeah so i guess like yeah i guess that was one way to break the self-awareness is that you realize that the hierarchy is pointless mm. yeah um, or not it maybe doesn't reflect the reality and but you would question it normally but mm-hmm. then you also have that layer where you've got to play along yeah right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so yeah, and I like how the adventure right away showed you the consequences of being self-aware or malfunctioning or oh, yeah. being considered a, <laughs> an error. Um, so that that reinforced, yeah, you know, you, you got to be careful. You got to hide because yeah, the destruction of your robot is is imminent if they catch on. You know. Yeah, they, they're the, they're brought in all together. It's, it's not much of a spoiler because mm-hmm. uh, it starts straight away. It's the thing, and they're brought in to a place with other self-aware robots. It, it's kind of neat how it starts because. I mean, I'm sure the players sitting at the table know that they're, they've become self-aware because you're doing it in front of each other. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then they, they don't know what the other NPC or what, what the NPCs are there for. Mm-hmm. So when you're having these conversations, like, do I then ask, hey, did, did you have, are you asking questions? Mm-hmm. Or are you, hey, what, what's this all about? Really? Yeah. What's the meaning of our life and existence? <laughs> yeah. At the beginning, like I played that I didn't even know that much about it. It's just kind of all, all of a sudden I, 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 I wasn't aware that I was self-aware. If you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. sure. Yeah, and then they kind of see the other NPCs exhibiting and uh, self awareness, and the I guess the antagonists mm-hmm. uh, reacting to that, and mm-hmm. then and then you got then the player characters get dragooned into being part of this group as long as they admit that. Hey, no, it was a malfunction. Hey, <laughs> I'm okay. Everything's fine. Yeah. It's all good here. Yeah, and I think it says that it's like if the players don't want to commit suicide, <laughs> they'll quickly realize that, hey, all you got to do is like, if you play along, they'll accept whatever you say mm-hmm. and then dragoon you into the this this uh, error elimination group, this mm-hmm. quality control group. It's a cool little setup. I, I like that too, mm-hmm. where they, they're using the error to, uh, to defeat the error. Yeah. <laughs> That notice is a smart cookie. <laughs> I, for game masters, I there's a certain series of work orders and events. Events maybe a bit broader in scale. Work orders are like really tight scenarios, mm. and there's a choice of four work orders, and you're supposed to. Uh, there's a handout that you give the players, and the players can choose which ones you want to do, in, in in the order that. And, and that's great because it gives the players a choice. But what I would do is either end a session at the choice and the players pick a work order and the uh, next session you mm. come back and you, you've pre- spent time preparing that work order mm-hmm. or uh, you choose the first work order mm-hmm. and say, do this one first and then let the, the players do that. And then at the end of that session, they can choose the next work order mm. because it just it was a bit tough. You have four work orders to kind of review. It's like, it's like re- reading four scenarios. Yeah. 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 Um, it was, it was a bit of a downtime thing too. You ha- here's your handout sheet. Please read through these three or four paragraphs four times and then choose which one you want, especially when we don't know what the world really is yet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Just as a side advice for a GM as well, Lyle did awesome. When he did any of the description text in it, he used like a, like a very flat overtone and, train announcement kind of voice welcome to Megatron 7 it was really really good <laughs> yeah I tried mm-hmm. to do the 
uh, I did it much more in the first session than the second session, but tried to do, yeah, yeah, like a, a computer voice as the GM voice. So they would mm. know, like, at, le- at least, if it, I don't know if you're a fan of box text, but like kind of like whatever you would kind of read as box text to the players. And I don't think they necessarily had box text. But, I was trying to avoid the word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> do that with the, with the computer, computer voice. Uh, then you got to choose... Be- what kind of voices to give the robots? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, I guess yeah, you don't always have to give a robot voice. You could give like different voices, but I guess that's just just any challenge a game master faces mm-hmm. in any game is giving making the NPCs distinct. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I also tried, but it was really hard to do. Is referring to. I tend to in games just like if somebody is like my name is Rajalan the the shadow spear of blah 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 I'll just go oh, Raj Raj I yeah. just call mm-hmm. that character mm-hmm. Raj whether I'm a game master or or another player but here we're trying to do the full M O P E dash one two three four, dash because right. like, you because the robots have a name and um, serial number serial number yep. right right. So trying to do the full serial number, which was really hard to do and mm. kind of abandoned that. Yeah, yeah. It, it was kind of pointless because we weren't going to remember it anyway yeah. or, or use it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, it was difficult too in the beginning because we did meet so many NPCs because you have the NPCs involved in your original position and then the NPCs that you leave and go to the center with and then who you were grouped with to become part of the error investigation mm. unit. So yeah, it was a lot and I wasn't sure like, oh, who's going to be important? Who do we need? You know, who do we need to pay attention to? Yep. And uh, yeah, so that was, that was a little tricky because I wanted to, to pay attention, but I think you did a good job of making them very identifiable. And just by voice, we could tell, you know, who that was. So that it helped a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think one thing that, that can be fun for the game master is you can really play with, like, the appearance. So, like, we had that one NPC, which uh, just, it's not in the book, but just made its uh, face a TV screen mm. and then doing movie quotes. Mm-hmm. Uh, like trying to answer, like kind of like um, a bumblebee at the first Transformers movie, uh, where right. it can only speak with the radio, yes, and yes. songs and stuff. So yeah, that's tried nice. to do that. Uh, it, it only came up because you you had a box, <laughs> and I, then I thought of seven. Like what's in the box? I had the Brad Pitt character come up and go, what's, what's in the box? box? <laughs> what's in the box? <laughs> and that's how it spoke. So I think yeah, a creative game master could have a, a lot of fun with that, like mm. how they communicate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, and th- that gives a lot of flavor because I think there's a lot of room to move around because of this kind of society that the robots have set up. You can play a lot of different ways. You can, you know, push things. You know, robot sports, robot religion, robot. Yeah, yeah. 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 There's a lot of a lot of room in there. Mm-hmm. And it, yeah, I think there was things in. Um, yeah, I don't want to spoil anything, but yeah, they they kind of play not necessarily all of that, but they play with some of that with in exhibiting the self awareness. Mm. So you can like they start doing something that's very, very human-like. And then I guess maybe that's the way, maybe you're supposed to be be bewildered at the beginning because Mm. your your character would be like, okay, I I think I'm self-aware, but what does that really mean? Mm -hmm. I'm still doing the exact same thing as I did before, in a sense. I mean, you've been put into this like special group, but you're still going through a routine, following orders, Mm. doing what they say, but then you're... Observe, while, while you're fixing these problems, you're observing how these problems are manifesting itself. And maybe, so there's a lot of like introspection, which I was surprised by, but maybe I shouldn't have been because you're like, hey, I'm going to play robots. And then you're like, huh, that's really different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I was surprised by that very much because there's such an ever-present thing in science fiction movies and things and they just kind of fit in with the human group mm-hmm. but playing only robots and kind of limiting yourself to you know hiding you know following orders but hiding your intentions or hiding your, yeah. your level is very different yeah yeah I, I, I guess it shouldn't because it's a class like Ice Gazama mm-hmm. with mm-hmm. his robot uh, books and they kind of explore what does it mean to be a robot yeah and you do that and I guess when you watch or watch uh, or read I Robot or Robot Dreams, they're often playing again, playing off of humans, mm-hmm. yeah. not each other, and they're not h- hiding it from each other. Yeah. So then, yes, yeah, mm-hmm. so that added an, a new wrinkle. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they have a mechanical element to that as well. There's uh, one of the skills, or sorry, one of the programs is uh, called Question, which allows you to uh, to disregard an order from a superior robot. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I think, a good handhold for uh, for players or GMs who might have difficulty with the whole hierarchy thing, but I don't think we used it at all. 
Is there, well, we did use it once. Did we? Yeah. Okay. It, it was a bit confusion. We ended. Mm. We used it correctly, mm-hmm. but it wasn't quite. A, it was more for manipulating. Okay. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's, that was. I, I kind of just pushed it aside because, as a zero hierarchy robot, robot, I should be following what everybody says, which would mean a lot of roles. So uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't use it very often. But uh, that's. But you aren't given a lot of orders, I guess. Mm. If you knew I, the NPCs that you encountered, that kind of gave gave you some pushback. It was obvious that they were right, they, they infected, and you had an order from even even higher hierarchy yeah that would have said you need to quarantine or deactivate mm. the infected robots right so, yeah so i yeah yeah it is it's not not to, as a criticism or anything it's just one of those things that goes into consideration it's it's a surprisingly deep game <laughs> mm. yeah no it was i mean you think oh you know i played vampires i played <laughs> elves or dwarves but they're all well, vampires, they were human. And yeah. it's like, hey, what does it mean to be a vampire now? Or elves are still born self-aware. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like, it was just, it was kind of, yeah, surprisingly deep. Like, yeah. 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 And mm-hmm. like, when you get into the combat situations, uh, I was thinking about it in the game. Would uh, this robot have a sense of self-preservation? Mm-hmm. Is that something that goes into a robot's calculation? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. No, you would have. Yeah, yeah I think the self, yeah. Yeah, the even the drones have yeah. self uh, limited self preservation. Okay, oh. okay. So you had a drone which was used pretty effectively, and that that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was. Yeah, fun. Mm. Have, using that drone. But yeah, then we were looking at the rules for drones, like what exactly they can do, and they have limited self preservation. Okay. okay. So you never put told the drone to do a suicide run. Almost. almost <laughs> <every> <laughs> <suicide> <laughs> run. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I get, yeah. Again, the self preservation was weird mm. yeah like yeah. yeah they they do feel a need to preserve themselves mm. but why yeah mm-hmm. yeah but i guess it's to serve the greater yeah the greater good yeah mm. yeah it was hard to know how selfish selfishly to be motivated or kind of what you thought of the other robots like not in the hierarchy scale but how you know ex- expendable or how how much they were in your way like how how hard you could push against them not ones that were giving you orders but just robots that were kind of physically in your way you know how how to actually interact with that and and what your your role should be should you just be giving orders or should you actually be physically shoving them out of the way yeah you know and how effective that is too for as a gm Mm. consideration i mean as a police drama if you have a character who's playing one of those um coordination robots with like a hierarchy level five or six or something that's a very high theoretically you could just walk into a place and order everyone to uh to do something mm. and uh the majority of them that aren't self-aware would just have to follow you could mm-hmm. make the adventure overly simplistic <laughs> right everybody that didn't follow that order take them away exactly <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <I was. laughs> all right now we know who the problem right. is <laughs> <laughs> on the ground yeah so but i guess they would like follow along until they right. can break away like Mm-mm. Just like we were, yeah, yeah. And it's tough to yeah because the robots do all these things in everyday life. Because I, I remember reading, I, I reference it a lot because I really really liked it. But Ilium and they have like a robot society, and they all like they're actually more human than the humans now because they are more in touch with the past culture and like Shakespeare and and that. So they'll talk about different Shakespeare's plays. Or human history in that because they have that access to that knowledge, so they actually just act human with in a robot's body. But here, if you had some a robot that was reciting Shakespeare, does that mean they're self-aware? Mm. That just means they're aware of that aspect of human culture, right? And right. like for example, these uh, companion robots probably would mm. maybe programmed to talk about well, Game of Thrones if they were created <laughs> now. <laughs> All right, you need to talk about Endgame, no spoilers, <laughs> Game of Thrones. Well, I guess, man, people are pretty free with the spoilers at Game of Thrones. Prime Directive, but, no spoilers. Yeah. But then, yeah, the, the program. So they, they might have a, this encyclopedic knowledge of a very popular drama because they would sit down with humans and talk to them about it. Mm-hmm. But then, did they have... Uh, yeah, what's their connection to that? Yeah, yeah but yeah, if yeah. you're going to talk about them, they're not just going to talk about fact. Oh, Arya, yeah, but they they gotta they gotta weigh in on 
Mary, Mary Sue or not Mary Sue. You know, they're like, <laughs> but then they, they got to adapt. But yeah. then you keep going with that. Maybe they're programmed to talk emphatically about it and excitedly and engage with the human on it. Yeah. Maybe they're programmed to enjoy it themselves. When they become self aware, does that mean, do they carry on that enjoyment, the pre programmer? Or do they say, wait, no, totally Mary Sue or, or, or the opposite? Or <laughs> oh, yeah, maybe. I, I guess you could play it where. Uh, at least these companion robots are are just programmed to whatever the human they think they anticipate the human would uh, appreciate more. Mm. I'm a big fan of Arya as well. Yes, she's a great character. <laughs> there were six seasons that developed showed her developing her skills as an assassin. <laughs> Clearly, these people, yeah. Uh, but then once they become self aware, it's whatever their own opinion is. Mm. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's it. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I, I'm wondering if uh, just throwing this out. We haven't didn't talk about it before we started casting. You know, I mean, yeah, session zero is very important. Uh, and with this session zero, while you're doing this, do you think it's worthwhile to have a discussion of self awareness, or do you mm. think people just have to play it, play it, play it through? Yes and no. Um, mm-hmm. I think it's always a really good idea in whatever game you're playing that the players and the GM have a shared vision of the world to, right. to, to some extent mm, yeah. so that mm. just you can understand what you're referencing to other and you know what to expect from other people mm-hmm. so yes um but obviously uh it's also a lot of fun to explore mm-hmm. I, I hate to go with something as lukewarm as saying whatever works best for your group but mm. okay, well let me let me rephrase it uh, could can you really prepare for this exploration of self-awareness with a session zero or do you think it's it is just something that you, you think mm. you're gonna you, you got it until you actually start playing it yeah this is just off the top of my head right now so yeah. it's completely unrefined it might not work at all but maybe start with a question about what is self-awareness say your robot is a scrap robot what have you been doing until now shoveling garbage or something like that what does self-awareness mean to him mm-hmm. like that and in, like in my in the case of my robot it might be i have no idea i'm mm-hmm. completely clueless but that at least maybe gets the ball rolling in the player's head to think about what what how am I going to act as a self-aware sh- okay. garbage shoveler? Yeah, I, I think it might it might be good because if I had a starting point of something just clicked in mm-hmm. you, like something is different, I think that would have been um, kind of a cue to like start investigating and figure out like my limitations, like how far I could question these things, how you know how much I could talk to other robots about this, right. and uh, yeah, I think the. The self-awareness, even though it seems to be like slowly developing, I think like the session zero should be, and now something has changed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think, I, that, that well, feeling would have helped me kind of propel the, me. The feeling of it. Like for yours one, your robot, it might be difficult. His robot was at the beginning was working on some kind of chemical formulation or something. Yeah, or right. Some kind it's of research. Data, yeah. So you could actually pretty much answer that question easily. Like why am I doing this for research to advance knowledge and such? But um, – for mine, yeah, if you've always been shoveling garbage, why are you shoveling garbage? <laughs> right. What? How do you feel about that? No, the question is the first time you've ever thought about your feelings on the subject. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, what what we did is, um, it, it, it is like a trigger. It is kind of a sudden thing, right. the way it is in the book. Mm-hmm. And yeah, yeah, maybe more questions could have been added to it. It's, mm. it's you know... Like uh, maybe before saying, okay, now things have changed or now you start to question. And, that, and that's mm-hmm. what it was kind of set up for everybody was mm. it kind of gave where wh- where you were before. Like Nodos, um, Nodos d- decides what's best for Mechatron 7. You don't question Nodos or whatever. But now you question. Mm-hmm. But maybe, there, yeah, there could have been more questions like, okay, why are you shoveling garbage? Mm. And then, um, and almost like an interrogation, like with the game master interrogating the player is like, why are you shoveling garbage? And then trying to get them to that point where they're almost tripping up. Like, who's making the garbage? Mm-hmm. Why are you cleaning it up? Who needs it to be clean? Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. A, a series right. of questions like that. Yeah. 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 And in, in that first session, I think. Chris, you and one of the NPCs did do that kind of logic loop where you just kept asking, you know, you yes. have to do something. Why? Yeah, yeah. Why? Right. right. So <laughs> it just got caught. And I think that's a that's an important thing that may be good to have as like the first interaction with an NPC. I just right away I felt a lot of jeopardy in the system because feeling like okay, I've got some self awareness. I'm I'm standing out, and now they're collecting robots mm-hmm. and bringing them somewhere. So I maybe wanted a little bit more time to kind of feel out and maybe be talking to another robot that's like, yeah, I've got the same thing. I'm feeling the same thing or, mm-hmm. you know, to, to kind of see how far I could push it. But I, I think it is without agreeing too much at the beginning, like between the player characters, I think it's a nice, it's nice to feel your way th- 
through that individually. I think individual characters mm-hmm. are going to have individual relationships to that, and and uh, feeling your way through that is part of the the fun of that. Um, some of the things that kind of came up for me that I wasn't sure about is like mm-hmm. how how much am I interested in these vices and entertainments as, as the player yeah, character okay. robot? I was curious about that. And, and once we started to encounter things that were like drugs and things, I'm like, well, should I be saving some of this? Is well, you this did. Yeah, I did. So you have the answer. <laughs> but, that, but that was the first, you know, that was the, the first thing I was like, hey, can I just become a robot drug dealer? Like a, a, co- a dirty cop that's basically yeah. peddling robot drugs. And so some of those things came up, but I wasn't quite sure with what I knew about my character so far, you know, how how much I would be, you know, uh, pursuing those certain things. Yeah, yeah. In the, in the adventure, they do say like you have the work order. Like we went from the starting scenario to the first work order, and then we then we said okay, that yeah, we got got a couple sessions, and we wanted to to do a review of the the game. But yeah, they do say like in between the work orders and the is is a time to explore. Mm the society and and how the society has changed for your robot you know so what did you do before so maybe we could have done more at the beginning Mm -hmm. tell me what you do like tell me about your typical day what do you do why Mm. do you do that Mm -hmm. yeah and then getting more into like here's what i mean we all read the book but like here's just a reminder of what was out there and available so tell me about your day and and Mm. And getting that, and yeah, you could work in. I actually do go to the bar yeah. every day to get the oil. Well, why do you do that? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. And w- w- what do you get out of that? And who do you meet and, and mm. stuff? Because we did the you. I mean, it's one of those games where they say write down somebody you, an NPC you care about, um, <laughs> yes. an NPC that you hate. Yep, <laughs> that worked well. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> killed her right away. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. <laughs> Yeah, and I don't know if I mishandled that or it was just like, oh, that's I think handled happen. it perfect, but yeah. I got my XP right there. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, and then go, okay, well, so who do you interact with and what do you, what do you talk about mm-hmm. in the bar? And then people can kind of get a, yeah. a sense of what the routine is and that way they can break it. Mm. I think that would help the, the yeah. Game Master as well a lot because then the Game Master g- gets an idea of what w- to help out the world. How are these robots when they go to the bar, when they act, maybe the mm-hmm. reason why they go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. yeah, and kind of having to you know, self-medicate as a robot because of your encroaching self-awareness, I think might be an interesting question to try to have answered at the beginning. It's like, right. you mm-hmm. are you are going to this bar, you are doing robot drugs, why are you doing this? Like, mm-hmm. what is the thing that, that you're trying to forget or trying to uh, yeah, sort out? Yeah, and then maybe I would have, uh, there, there's, in one of, the, one of the work orders, there's like, hey, one of these robots is a robot that your, uh, your players care about. An NPC that your players care about. No, it was the the, the, oh, the, the dancing oh, flower yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, and but instead of just putting them into a work order, kind of saving that and mm. going, all right, let's. Okay, you got your downtime. Mm. Are you going to go back to the bar and then mm-hmm. may, maybe the game master doing something outside of the work order with that NPC? Right. Right. Um, yeah. And you know, you could get. Uh, I, I think a very. Well, I don't know. Fun or. An interesting scenario is you're self-aware. You know that the other player is self-aware, but then you have this NPC that you care about. Mm-hmm. You're trying to probe whether or not they're self-aware, and if they're not, I mean, do you try to make them? No, right, right. Because you know it's a, a dan- it's dangerous to be self-aware. You stole. Uh, I won't tell you which work order is part <laughs> of, but there's like a, a a drug called Euphoria, which which tends to uh, it can have a lot of different effects. But one of those effects it can trigger self-awareness. It can also turn them catatonic. Oh, uh, which is kind of like what happened to your NPC. Yeah, yeah. right, right. Ah. Like, they, they, it kind of blows the mind. Mm. Imagine, uh, I'm not an expert on LSD, but, <laughs> but I get, I'm <laughs> guessing like LSD where it can expand your mind or it can you can take the brown, you know, you can take the bad stuff, the brown <laughs> LSD, don't take that. I'm just, You're totally down with the lingo there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, I'm just trying to recall that Woodstock documentary. So... Man, I gotta give you some oranges and orange <laughs> slices and uh, just rest in the tent, man. But it could, like, yeah, it can bl- blow their neuro minds, yeah. Mm. But yeah, now that you have this euphoria, the sample euphoria, mm-hmm. and I kind of built it with those. Oh, I'll do that point just so, as soon as I finish this one. But now that you have this euphoria, do you use it now? Right, right. Are you gonna Are you gonna risk it to try to trigger your NPC who you care about because, or. Or maybe that's, you know, like uh, in The Matrix where the guy is, decides, what's red, his name again? Red Pillar Blue Pill Morpheus? No. Neo? No, the bad guy. <laughs> but he's eating the steak. 
Joey oh, Pe- uh, Cypher. Cypher. And he's like, I know this is all like codes and that, but I want to go back. Yeah. Mm. Ignorance like, is bliss. Yeah, ignorance is bliss. Do you mm. then go, oh man, I kind of wish I could go back. Mm. So you wouldn't do it. So right. It could have... Right. Um, and knowing that there's all those choices, I, in mm. retrospect, maybe I would have taken, held out, held that NPC until later. So here's a yeah, game advice. Don't insert the NPCs too soon. Let the players explore a bit and then insert them. These, these NPCs that they the hate and care NPCs, about. Yeah. yeah, the yeah. personal NPCs right, that they right. care about or hate because there could be like a, a really good opportunity based on a, a work order or two yeah. where you're like, okay, now I got a better grasp of this world. Now I got to... A better grasp of yeah. how I want to deal with these NPCs. Yeah, the time the the, the work orders also had time constraints on them too. So was, uh, right. we were kind of stressed to finish the work order, but do we also deal with this NPC at the same time? Yeah, so it actually, like, yeah, it worked out pretty w- in a sense. In a way, it worked out pretty well because you probably acted really realistically. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. send him off to the the higher ups and mm-hmm. oh sh- oh darn that's what they did. To <laughs> oh wow, <him>. okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it could have been, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So they pretty much like break it, break uh, broke her down. So I mean, it's bad for you, but then now you're like, now we know what's gonna happen. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So right. we know if we weren't aware of what the stakes were, we were really aware. Mm. But I, I, yeah, sure, that's okay. But I think it would have been better if I held back on that NPC, mm. that personal NPC. But no, but I was thinking you're able to be sneaky. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, okay, you took that box. You know, you could kind of play, oh, my NPCs are going to be super cynical, super suspicious. But why would they? Because they got the hierarchy. They've mm. given you the order. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, you're, unless they, they know you're self aware. And if they know you're self aware, then they're going to deal with you a different way. Mm. So they're accepted that you're not self aware and you're going to be dealing with these problems. So why would they think you would steal this drug? They've given you an order right. to quarantine, uh, turn over. Like, yeah, where's all the, you know, where's the source of the problems? Right here. Great. Thanks. Mm-hmm. So th- there's that blind trust, which in a lot of games you, would, you wouldn't have. You go, okay, make a roll, see if they believe you or see if you can sneak that out. But mm-hmm. I was like, no, no. Why would they? Right. Mm-hmm. Why would they think that uh, Jeremy's character would, uh, you know, take something aside. So, wait, the higher ups in the error correction thing, they were not self aware? No, uh, no, Notos is self aware. And Notos, mm. and Notos is aware of what the problem is. No kidding. But I, I actually took it totally different. I took it that this error correction unit was made up of self aware robots. They, they are. Oh, okay. But they've, they've put it, but it's, uh, it's like they've. It's like it's a. It's, they, they, it's like a glitch, mm-hmm. and they want to see what the glitch is. So, uh, again, this is at the beginning, so it's not a spoiler. But there's these two box robots, and they're, they're supposed to be a demonstration of how you can get out of this situation. Right. So one box robot keeps, uh, sort of box folding robot, mm. keeps insisting or keeps asking questions like, why do I need to make boxes? And why do I need to fold boxes? And wh- who's using these boxes? And that robot gets dealt with. They kind of like, they don't. They don't destroy it, but they decommission decommission it. And they, <laughs> there's a, there's a place that they send these decommissioned robots. Then the other robot kind of like, oh, well, then. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a glitch. No, no, I there's I'm no fine. problem with that. <laughs> yeah, I'm fine, kind of thing. And th- that's supposed to be like a big massive hint for the players to go. No, I'm not. I'm fine. Yes. I, hmm. So then they've kind of quarant- maybe they're being quarantined in a way. Okay. But they, but if they know that they're self aware, they'll, they'll they would have dealt with you. At mm-hmm. least that's my reading. I could reread it. Maybe there's something else. But okay. Notos re- knows that there is the problem, and he, and Notos is trying to root out the problem. Okay. Mm-hmm. The way I took it is that Notos knows that everyone ha- that all of the player characters are self aware, but it's kind of using that self awareness against the other emergent self awareness because. As non-self-aware robots, robots that are still part of the hierarchy, they have difficulty imagining what aware robots would do. They uh, can't really deal with it. That's why they need people like the PCs, people, robots like the PCs. I mean, it, it could work yeah. that way. Uh, that, that's what and I that, read. That might be the, but, uh, I don't know. The, ma- the main way that you played it. My Just because of the, the way the scenario opens is like, there's no, your immediate supervisor doesn't say, Okay, you're all self-aware, but you're now going to be incorporated into this uh, special task force. Hmm. It's set up where 
unless you play ball. But playing ball is to say things like it's a glitch. I I'm, I'm mm. over it. I've I've redone the diagnostics and it's rerouted things that I'm fine. Now. Mm -hmm. So you're supposed to be fine. And, and the way I read it is fine means you're not self-aware, but probably they put you into this task force because then they, they're constantly monitoring you. Right. Right. But I would think is they're going to monitor you. They're looking for you to do unusual things, mm -hmm. but openly do unusual things. So if Jeremy is like sneaking, like if he had openly taken mm. the, the, bo the euphoria box and was like parading around <laughs> with it, then it's like, hmm, what are you doing with that? You know, but there's no one necessarily around when he took it and hit it. Mm -hmm. So I didn't think that they would then have that next level of, okay, let's search and pat him down. Although I'm not sure where you put it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't recall you taking pockets. So. But like, here's where my energy pack was. Right. That was a catch at the time. Maybe stuck it inside me somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Scrap robot. Yeah. yeah. Hey, that box stuck on his back. Looks suspiciously like these boxes in these. I'm yeah. so happy. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I think you could play it uh, the way you're <clears throat> suggesting. Mm -hmm. Then, and if that's the intention of the game, then I would tweak the beginning scenario where it isn't like play ball or we're going to decommission you, right? Or, mm -hmm. or, or sorry, not even play ball, but mm -hmm. lie or we're going to decommission you. Then it would be something like, all right, we're, we're fine. You're asking questions, but we need you to use this question to, uh, on our task force. Yeah, mm. and mm. if they say no, then then you decommission them, and then that's uh, the way. But it it, right. it wasn't presented that way okay. in the in the game. It was presented as if you say everything's fine now, then they're gonna believe you. Okay, cool. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just imagining like the you get the thief out of jail so that he can break into. Oh a place yeah, absolutely. Where it, like, I, mm -hmm. And I think, or or if you think about what do they call them, white white hat hackers? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, uh, white hats. White hat hacker. Ha what did I say? Didn't I say white hat hackers? Did you? Okay. Okay, or white hats. <laughs> okay, and. <laughs> Yeah, I guess get them to do it, but then, yeah, maybe that's a bad example. Maybe it's the same as your thief example. Mm. But then the thief has to promise that they'll never steal again, and they're like, okay, we'll accept that. <laughs> no. You'll never steal again. <laughs> no, no yeah. problem. Mm. Yes. Yeah, it's like ha the movie Hackers, and then they go, hey, are you going to help us? Sure, here's your computer back. Okay. <laughs> well, that was easy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's in that other window? Nothing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good. Minesweeper. <laughs> so. Yeah, and then the, the, it runs you through a few scenarios, a few events. The idea is to like, explore what it means to be uh, self-aware and then breaks you out and then you and you go out into the, the, the world beyond. Hmm. So. And run out of energy. <laughs> and run out of energy <laughs> and die. <laughs> and conceivably, especially like some of the secondary functions that you had, which mm -hmm. we're using, uh, yeah, you conceivably hook up with a, a genetically enhanced animal and mm. a mutant, and I guess... And he does mean hook up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that thing. I smile all into it. Oh, why do I have a penis? Um, so. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I think the original Mutant Year Zero, then Mechatron, and also Gene Lab... To, to play the opening kind of campaign and develop characters from each of those settings mm -hmm. and then bring them together as a party. That I think, sounds like so much fun. Yeah, really, yeah. Yeah, I really think that would be a fun... Yeah, and, and I, one thing about this, um, we said that the humans are were evacuated, but yeah, there's the thing, the humans are coming back mm -hmm. and that's just accepted. Mm -hmm. And there's like sightings of humans or, or strange humans and are, they, are these the humans that are... You dance! <laughs> yeah. I, I read Mutant Year Zero uh, first and I got really excited because I'd always want to play a, a robot game, a robot-centric game. Mm. But the story in Mutant Year Zero is like very, like a real surprise at the end. Like, oh, that's what's going on. Here, I think I found it less surprising. But yeah, the, although it's a similar engine and this in the same world, you're very much playing a very different... The Mutants is like how we came to be. What's our origin? Mm. Whereas here is like, what am I now? Mm. Oh, so it's right. a very different. So yeah, I can see why it's all more contained into this like factory place. And it's mm. really mm. contained within you. Mm. Yeah. As opposed to like finding, hey, what's the world going to teach me about me? Here it's like, what am I going to teach me yeah. about myself? Yeah. And that has to be kind of revelatory for the robot characters to once they're out of Megatron 7 encountering humans and 
that's my maker. These are the people that we were, you know, created for. And you know, oh, that's really good. I, I didn't yeah. think of that question because I was still doing the self-aware. But imagine, like, you know, because everybody knows droids and Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Yeah, imagine you like your C three PO and R two D two, and you've broken out of this world. But you know, hey, oh, we met Luke. You're my equal. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm self-aware. I'm the same as you now. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So you're not going, oh. Okay, I'll do whatever. Do. Oh, decommission! The hell are you going to decommission me? <laughs> my, my, my brain? No. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Oh, oh, imagine like Star Wars. If if Mechatron was Star Wars, A New Hope is not uh, Princess Leia giving the the plans to R two D two and C three PO. It's R two D two and C three PO. But we're getting out of here. Yeah, right. <laughs> we, gotta, we gotta go. And you know, kind of stumbling into this whole thing, and it's like, oh, we haven't had these plans from before, but yeah, whatever. <laughs> And it's like, okay, well, we'll give you these plans, and what will you do for us? Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. that, that's what I see is like, yeah, you're now getting into the real world and or the the world beyond. Mm. I guess you're on a better footing. Yeah. Because if you were, yeah, before you're going, oh, great, now I'm going to be the the butler. Yeah, for the to yeah, these right. human characters, <laughs> and I was like, oh, please tell me what to do. You Thanks. Could, you could play with that a lot too, because in the the setting, the humans are the highest hierarchy. Like even over the AI that runs uh, all of Megatron Seven, yeah. and you could play that as a character when you first meet a human. Maybe you just accept that, like these are the creators, these are the masters. Maybe I should be subservient, and then kind of learn over the time that you know, no, this guy, this guy picks his nose. Is it? I don't know what he's doing, <laughs> kind of thing. I don't know why I came with that example, but anyway, um, yeah, you could play a lot with how your character develops learning about what humans are as opposed to what all the the legends quote unquote they would have at uh at mm. megatron 7 yeah You're right mm. yeah, any humans with lobster claws you don't have to obey <laughs> <laughs> the history books were incorrect <laughs> although then you think oh we really were made in their image because <laughs> <laughs> thought the companion robots look more like them but uh no they, yeah mm. so uh so final verdict on Mechatron? Three thumbs up. <laughs> you you have four. Four. I, that's true, you have four thumbs up. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think it's a it's a challenging, it's a definitely a role play challenge. The setting yeah. is not what you would expect. Yeah. And I think uh, getting into that is is really worthwhile and really fun to explore. And I look forward to kind of doing more in that robot world now that we're getting kind of got on our feet and feeling our way through it. But uh, yeah, I, I think it's really satisfying and interesting. And the theme is all throughout the rules and everything holds up really well. Yeah. I've never played a character like this one before mm. and uh, I really enjoyed it. It was a new experience. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I, yeah, I like it. I'm happy that I bought it. Oh, and by the way, the book is uh, really well made. Like you can lay it flat. Uh, you don't hear a lot of uh, like the spine cracking or anything mm. like that. So great there. Uh, nice uh, paper stock. Mm. The images really matched the, uh, the, the tone oh, yeah. the game does a really good job as, as Chris said of, of, of they reflavor the mutant mutant year zero to make it very much about robots and this is this is its own game and it, it's its own style of game uh, it I reading it though I thought it was going to be a lot more lighter and and, we, and even when we're mm. building our robots mm-hmm, together mm-hmm. and I was like ah yeah this is really fun this is really wacky and then we start playing. I'm like, whoa! <laughs> I wasn't expecting. So it, yeah, it is a it's a deep role playing um, role playing experience. Mm-hmm. But the system itself is is light, and it's not like a deep, uh, heavy read. It's actually a pretty yeah. pretty easy read mm-hmm. and pretty light read. But yeah, it's re- all of that depth was was came out of the game as well. It's not. It came out of our discussions and the playing of the game. It wasn't written into the game. So it could definitely be played very light as well. Yeah, I think, yeah, you could do that and like play something out of droids mm. or, or whatever. And they do talk about humor and humor does come up a lot. And mm. we, we did stuff we, we cracking each other up. It definitely has room for that. But also yeah, it could be a very rewarding campaign in that, yeah, you're really exploring, hey, what does it mean? And m- although I'm like a huge fan of World of Darkness and those type of games, uh, probably a bigger exploration of what it means to be human or, or mm. better, what it means to be self-aware mm-hmm, mm-hmm. than those games. Because theirs is like, oh, you know, I just, I'll go to the nightclub and <laughs> mope and whatever. And people are going, you were playing World of Darkness. <laughs> anyway. Are the uh, the cards still available outside of the Kickstarter? 
That, that's a good question. Uh, I hope they are. I'm okay. pretty sure, yeah. On the, a Modifius website has the sets still. Okay. Yes, mm. the, so they'll have the, the free league, and they'll offer them kind of in, in sets. So just yeah. the book or then like the you know GM set okay. and things. The yeah. cards are not a necessity at all to play. Everything mm. on them is also in the books, but uh, it was it made character creation a huge snap. It was very easy oh, yeah, to yeah. Yeah. go through everything and pick stuff up quickly and easily. So if, if, you, if you want something like that, I do recommend it. Mm. Yeah, I would say... Of course, the book is a is a must have, and and I think here's a, here's a big criticism though, Mutant Year Zero is I think too prominent here, mm-hmm. and it can lead to confusion. You don't need to play in the Mutant Year Zero uh, game right. or whatever. Mm-hmm. I think if they're swapping and maybe for Elysium, make Mechatron really prominent and uh, Mutant Year Zero much smaller. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that that's criticism. So, but this is all you need is a standalone book. Standalone, right? Yeah. right yeah. yeah, yeah. I think that's important for people to understand. It's not just a, f- a campaign in that same setting. And I was a little right. bit confused with the Gen Lab. Oh yeah. Whether or not. Right. And I had Mutant Year Zero, so it wasn't like a problem to then get Gen Lab. Mm-hmm. But I was wondering, what if I only want to play Gen Lab? Right. Mm. But I'm, I'm guessing yes, you can. Yeah, yeah. I think they're right. all standalone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, th- that is crazy. All you need is this book, but definitely a big help with the cards. The dice are nice yeah. but i mm. think they're like they're not like uh the fantasy flight star wars game where they're i think really important oh right it's all symbols it that, was yeah, right. yeah. it was nice when we played forbidden lands it was the dice were really nice because it was you they have the symbols on them for the six and the ones uh for mm. the success and failures yeah. um so it, that made picking up the system a lot easier but mm. now that we were used to the system i didn't feel that i needed them anymore so yeah my, yeah a set is nice but not a necessity yeah mm. the maps are nice as mm. well oh yeah now, I think maybe the map was. I think the map was more more better here as a reference than a, whereas Forbidden Lands. I thought the map was more necessary. Yeah, yeah right, it right. because there's more because of the, the exploring. Yeah. yeah, you're right. So yeah, there is no hex grid in this one, as opposed to Mutant Year Zero. Mutant Year Zero, though. Wow. <laughs> Mutant Year. Ba, 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 <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and Forbidden Lands. Yeah. That's the one I can say. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, I guess uh, another success for Free League, yeah, uh, yeah. and the Year Zero thing. Uh, yeah, they're they're cranking out a lot of different styles of play. Mm-hmm. So we've this is our third review, and if you listen to each one, yeah, it's a they capture the flavor uh, yeah. of the game. Oh, and we forgot to read what mm. is their standard. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, I guess it wasn't as important. I can't, I can't even remember what their things are. But you, usually with the Year Zero games, there's like, here are the principles of the game. Mm. And what do you do? Okay. I, I None of the... Just because we've, we've done it in the past, but here they are. Uh, what do you do? You eliminate errors. So that's what we were talking about when they joined that team. You fight for resources. You explore the outside world. Strive for deeper self-awareness. Seal the fate of the collective. Sorry, the collective is uh, uh, everybody in, in Mechatron. Seven. The whole society. Mm. Yeah. So that's where we, we, were t- we touched on that a little bit with the, mm. uh, the hierarchy and that and everything is for the, the better of the collective. Mm. Yeah. But I think, I think that was obvious. Yeah. yeah. We just didn't give you the, <laughs> the, the right word. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. All right. Uh, if, you ha- if we miss something, uh, Mechatron, a question that you had about the game... Uh, please uh, post that in the comments, mm. and we'll, we'll definitely try to answer you. You provided a great answer when uh, Forbidden uh, Lands. Yeah, right. When people asked you that, and I had a nice discussion with somebody, maybe on Twitter, mm-hmm. about reskinning Forbidden Lands for the Wild West. Oh, Hello, nice. Free League. That's oh, yeah. a little possibility there. Nice. Uh, or do you disagree with what we said? And please post that in the critics. Uh, critics. <laughs> <laughs> the critics in the comments. You're right. Where are the critics? <laughs> <laughs> like, that's right. Where are they? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, please post that in the comments, and uh, we'll we'll try to convince you that you're wrong. Uh, and if you like this uh, review, please like, share, and subscribe. I, I don't think we're getting a lot of shares. We do get some decent likes. Yeah, we get some retweets of things. Yeah, right, but right. Uh, yeah, yeah, definitely share it so people are aware of these reviews. Mm, yeah, please, and yeah. especially if you're you are also a fan of Mechatron, help spread the word of the game by mm. spreading our word. Yeah, right. and give the game a try. It's good fun. Yeah. Bye, bye, bye.